This project and the research that led to it will enable distribution grid operators to connect more renewable energy sources like PV panels without building new lines. Throughout my research at ETH, I was always very much interested in industry collaboration, so bridging the gap between the theory that we and other labs developed and the application within the industry. My research is at the interconnection of optimization, control and power systems. Up until now in the distribution grid, we didn't use much control yet. Everything's basically just running because we deployed a lot of copper in the ground. In the future, we will need to go to an actively controlled distribution grid. Roughly eight years ago, here at the Automatic Control Laboratory, we started research on something that we call online feedback optimization. And this is a research brand that comes from controlling power grids. Because back in the days when this kind of research was started here, people were asking themselves, how are we able to control and especially optimize distribution grids, even though we have a poor model knowledge of the distribution grid and there is also not that many measurements available so that we could run something that people refer to as optimal power flow. And so what people did here is they basically abstracted the problem to differential equations, to math, to optimization problems, and they pushed it to peak mathematical abstraction, writing papers about the existence of manifolds and what kind of uh, Riemann, whatever. And after that, we then decided, okay, now that we did the math and we have this new method called online feedback optimization, let's push it back towards an application. What's kind of the state of the art before we invented online feedback optimization is what people refer to as optimal power flow, or generally solving an optimization problem using a model on a computer and then deploying the result of that optimization onto the real physics. Meaning that they take a system model, and they supply the system model with all kinds of parameters, with all kinds of information, and then they take an optimization algorithm. And they iterate between the optimization algorithm and the system model. So all of this runs on a computer in one big block. And after this has converged, which is an optimization problem, which is uh, pretty well analyzed, we then take the output of that and we apply it to the real system. So what's missing here is some kind of feedback that actually tells us what's happening in real time. And so this offline optimization, as I like to call it, without any feedback, is not robust to any kind of model mismatch. So what we instead invented is that we take this optimization algorithm and we don't connect it with the system model, but we actually connect it with a real system. So what we do is we turn this optimization algorithm into a feedback controller by interconnecting it with the real system, just like we do with normal controllers. And so now every time the optimization algorithm would like to try something out, we directly try it out on the real physics. So we actuate the real physics, we wait for the real physics to settle to a steady state. And then we give that information to the optimization algorithm. And by closing this feedback loop, we turn the optimization algorithm into a robust controller. How do we use that with the distribution grid in Argo? The new thing about this is that we're using an optimization algorithm as a feedback controller. So we interconnected not with a computer model, but we interconnected with the real physical system. In the case with the collaboration with Ivy, the real inverters, the real physical grid, the real power grid. Because up until now, we're usually an optimization algorithm is run together with a model of a system. Then these two basically talk to each other over and over again until they converge to the optimal solution of the optimization problem you want to solve. And then you would take that solution and you would apply it to the grid. But only then you would include the actual physical system. And if you have any kind of model mismatch in your model, then what's going to happen on the physics is not what you thought is going to happen while doing an optimization on your computer. And that might well lead to problems. Imagine that your 
estimating how much active power you should push with your inverters and your model says that the voltages and currents are going to be fine but because your model is never going to be perfect and maybe you thought the cable is a little bit thicker than it is you might actually overload and therefore damage the system. Here we always get feedback from the real physical system. So whenever the optimization algorithm tries to change these, uh, the input, the set points, to better solve the optimization problem, to get to a point that's even more optimal, we would try that point out on the real physics and directly get a measurement, a feedback from what's actually going to happen. And so if we're getting close to a constraint, if we're realizing that the cable is actually thinner than we thought it would be, we're going to see this and we can take that information into account. And this feedback is what makes this very robust. In our approach of using optimization algorithms as feedback controllers, we're able to work with very few model information because all the model information that you would usually need are in the real system already. You don't need to know the physics if you're actually using the real physics. If you're optimizing using an optimization algorithm and a system model, you will need to know the system model and you would need to parameterize it with the physical parameters, all kinds of inputs and outputs. Because we're using the real physics, we get that for free. We don't need to calculate what the real physics are going to do, we just take a measurement. Imagine you're driving a car. If you're supposed to drive 50 kilometers an hour, you're not going to think about, okay, I'm sitting in a car, there's three people and it's going slightly uphill and I have a headwind, so I need a pedal position of exactly 15 degrees to drive 50 kilometers an hour. That's not what you're going to do. You're going to think about, okay, I'm driving too slow, I want to drive 50, so I push the pedal and I accelerate. And you don't try to exactly match how you should put your pedal position, you're just going to increase it and then you're going to see what's happening. So you're making a decision, you actuate the system, you wait for the car to get faster, and then you measure how far you got. And if you end up at 45 kilometers, you're going to measure that, you're going to realize, and then you're going to run your optimization algorithm again, and then you can adjust this pedal position to drive a little bit faster. If you wouldn't have that feedback, you would just end up at 45 kilometers an hour, thinking that that should actually be 50, but because of some headwinds or whatever, it might not be. And that's the core advantage of having feedback, getting information, just having more data and information to work on. And therefore, we're able to better optimize these systems using real-time feedback from sensors. Getting this kind of feedback and getting this information from the system is what we've been doing in control systems and control engineering for nearly 100 years now. The special thing here is that we're not using one of the standard controllers to drive our system to a specific set point to, or to a specific reference. So for example, the 50 kilometers an hour, but we're actually solving an optimization problem. So by using this optimization algorithm as a feedback controller, we're not driving the system to a reference as normal controllers do, but we're driving the system to the solution of an optimization problem. So if you want to optimize your system, you want to utilize some infrastructure to the best extent you can define that as an optimization problem. And then what people used to do is they would solve that optimization problem on a computer using a model and then deploying those set points to the real grid. But we are now, and that's the new thing, we're using optimization algorithms as feedback controllers. So we're introducing feedback into optimization and therefore we're combining optimization and control. So imagine that you're operating a distribution grid so this distribution grid is probably going to be run as a radial grid. That means we have an interconnection to a higher level grid operator and then a long cable running throughout the city or village connecting houses, solar panels, maybe some wind farms, heat pumps, electric vehicle, vehicle chargers, industry, generally everything that consumes power. And on this grid we're going to have a certain voltage profile. So for example, if we have a high active power injection through renewable energies, for example, solar panels, then we would have this voltage profile. And at the very end of this line, if there's a large active power injection, we might have a very high voltage that might lead to voltage problems if that voltage is too high. What we can now do is we can prohibit someone from installing PV panels there, which is something we for sure shouldn't do. The other option would be to put a bigger cable in the ground so that the voltage doesn't raise that much. Or the third option would be that we use 
something to control this voltage, to push it down and allow even more active power injection at the solar pond. We can already do that today because what controls this voltage and what's enabling us to push this voltage down is reactive power and that can easily and freely provided by the solar plant already. And interconnecting heat pumps, electric vehicle, vehicle chargers, solar plants and wind farms throughout the grid enables us to control this voltage and to steer it in the way we want it to in an even better way. And with that we're able to control the voltage, therefore virtually reinforce the grid by allowing it to conduct um, even more power with more renewable energy sources in the grid like PV panels, we're getting even more inverters into the grid and we get even more actuators that can help us control the grid in a smart way to virtually reinforce it. And that will enable us to mitigate the reinforcement of the grid with new cables over bigger lines. Using a normal controller for this voltage problem that I showed here, is going to be difficult because a normal controller always needs a reference. Like the speed controller is going to get a reference of drive 50 km an hour, or the room temperature gets a command of I want 21 degrees. We would here need to tell the power system, hey, give me 400 volts, give me 410 volts. And it's going to be very easy to make the power system go to that point, but figuring out which voltage we want to have, that's the challenging part. Should we have 400? Should we have 410? Or should we actually have 390? And then who's going to make sure that that's exactly that voltage? Should it be the solar panels here? Should it be a heat pump there? And so that's where these optimization problems come up. Where you think about, okay, how do I optimize this operation? And then you're going away from just giving a reference to a controller, but you actually want to solve an optimization problem. And that's where we come in here using an optimization algorithm as a feedback controller, we're able to drive the system to the optimal solution of the optimization problem that we define. And that could, for example, here be that we say, I want all the voltages to be within the allowed range, but I want to minimize the cost of that. I want to minimize the usage of reactive power. I want to minimize curtailing renewable power while making sure that all these voltages are satisfied and also the currents are satisfied and also the inverters and everything that we're using to actuate is also only operating within their limits so we don't damage that equipment. And so just by, the, just by thinking about that, we always think in optimization problems. I want to minimize something while this is fine so we have constraints. And so in the end, it's different to normal control because we're not aiming to drive a system to a reference, but we're trying to optimize that system, therefore trying to drive the system to the point where the optimum lies. And that we achieve by using feedback. So we try out a new point, we apply that new point to the real system, we measure what's going to happen, and then we feed that back into our optimization algorithm. And with that, over time, we converge to the optimal solution. And while we converge, we actually drive the real system directly to that point. This started as very theoretical research that could have well just ended up in a dusty drawer. But the NCCR automation really helped us to bridge the gap into an application of this theory. One of the main challenges here was the communication infrastructure. In the transmission grid, the measurements, the actuators are pretty well connected and there is a good overview of what the state of the grid is and there's possibilities to actuate on that grid. But in the distribution grid, just historically, that wasn't needed and therefore many of the distribution grid operators don't have a communication infrastructure in place. On the measurement side of things, it is, it is good. But on the actuation side of things, it's lacking the capabilities to tell the deployed infrastructure like solar plant inverters or wind farms to do certain things. And one of the main challenges in this problem, in this project was therefore to connect the control room and our controller with the real physics. So in this block diagram, it wasn't necessarily the problem of getting the measurements to the controller, it was more a problem of getting the commands to the real physics. 
Luckily, IV has a very competent IT team that was able to set up this communication infrastructure quickly. And IV is a very innovative team and a company and that enabled to us to have a very fruitful collaboration with them. Trying to bridge the gap between theory and application, we reached out to a lot of industries and made a lot of connections with uh, companies working in the power grid and uh, also beyond that. And we see applications of this kind of theory whenever you need to, to solve an optimization problem on real physics. That could be the power system as we've been working on it up until now, but we could also optimize the usage of a bioreactor to produce a medicine. As long as there is a physical system and an optimization problem to be solved, our method can combine the two.